I'm Luke Catford. I'm joined by Tim Spears. We're here at my new Tim uh, Wolves 2, Spurs 3. A uh, bit of a disappointing result given the performance. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, I mean, what a strange game, really. I mean, Wolves started really well. Yeah. Um, then went 2-0 down inside three minutes. Then ended the first half well. Should have scored, did score, but it was incorrectly given offside. Mm. And then they started the second half really well. Boom, 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 three chances. Couldn't stick one in. Kane scores, it's 3-0. Molyneux is, is despondent as I've known it for a long time. Mm. And then we get this, this rousing comeback uh, with, with two goals, both from penalty spot. Um, to no avail in the end, but, but a, a spirited comeback and, and a thriller in the end, really. And, and they've been applauded off, yeah. um, in fact, given a standing ovation. So, really strange game because at 3 0, there was a kind of a, a six minute period after, between Kane's goal and then uh, Nevers' penalty, where there was an awful lot of doom and gloom knocking around. Mm. My Twitter timeline, by the way. <laughs> Uh, X rated was it? Well, it's just been ridiculous. Some of the negativity knocking around is um, so unnecessary. You know, this team's come so far in, in two in two years. I made the point of saying two years ago, Wolves were 19th in the Championship uh, without a manager. Yeah. Um, and I know it's tough. You know, the, you're heading for a third straight defeat and no goals in, in three games either, and you're losing three in a line. But come on, Spurs are a Champions League team, yeah. and Wolves have been ruthlessly uh, punished for a couple of lapses in con concentration really in the first half similar to that Watford the, la the last home game against Watford but it just shows you the shows you the, the class of the league that, that, they're, that they're in and, and you know they, they want to be here they want to be competing with these teams and bloody hell today compete with Spurs today you know they gave them a really good game like I said 16 shots to 10 on another day they'd, they'd have won it if, yeah. if things had gone their way they'd have won it um, but if the decisions are right then they get a point Honestly, that, that offside that offside goal just before half time, that's perfect time to score there. Mm. Two 0 down, they're flat, they're deflated. Brilliant work from Doherty. Jimenez sticks it in the net. Incorrectly. Bad 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 call from, yeah. from the line on. It's just it's just onside, simple as that. Mm. Um, and that's that's a real shame like I said and then they had a few chances straight after half time. If they, if they brought it back to 2-1, you can see you can see them going on to, to win it the way that yeah. they were playing. Like I said, they started the game really well, I thought. Costa played really well. Um, some good performances from the field, wing backs doing okay. Um, they had it with capabilities to, to win this game, but but yeah, that went against them and then Kane shows them how it's done with, with his finish. Um, and it was too much ultimately to, to claw back. Yeah, again though, I mean the two goals, they both come from the penalty spot, nothing from open play. I mean Helder Costa has got gold in the chance to score. Do, do all still lack a little bit of that clinical edge? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I was starting to write my obituary at 3-0 uh, <laughs> slash match report and, and that was the story of it, that Wolves, Wolves were paid for, for missing their chances. And there were certainly a few that you could point to tonight. Costa being the most guilty head, yeah, through by Gibbs White. He's in on goal. He's got to score. He's just got to score. Yeah. He's, he's, he should probably take it try and round the keeper and stick it into an empty net but he's just tried to beat Lloris to the ball and, and prod it wide agonisingly wide it goes um, yeah that was a killer that was but yeah that, that's that's indicative of, of Wolves this season and Costas you know still no goals or assists for him this season um, and the forwards have got to start producing more that, 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 that continues yeah um, one man who really really stood out I thought when he came on was Morgan Gibbs White I mean he's, he's come on what is it his most, his, his most time on the pitch in terms of Premier League, in terms of yeah. goals. I mean, it was a it was a great showing from him because he really did change the game, didn't he? He did, he did, and um, I, I, I can't speak highly enough of him. This 18-year-old kid. Uh, there's only three pl three 18-year-olds in the Premier League who've made two appearances or more this season, mm -hmm. which shows you how rare it is for someone of his age to get some regular game time. Uh, Phil Foden's one. I can't remember who the one is off the top of my head, but. Um, but he's been he's been used pretty regularly by Nuno. But but tonight was was um, as you say his longest appearance as it was chucked on after the hour mark uh, head of Traore and Vinagre. Yeah. Vinagre didn't come on tonight. Traore didn't come until late. It was Bonatini who I thought had a decent game as well. I think contributed to the build up to both penalties. Certainly the first one Bonatini mm. I thought he did okay. Um, but Gibbs White yeah. 18 years old, but lifted the whole team yeah. and also lifted the crowd. A fantastic moment. Um, after he he he'd run around Harry Winks and burst from midfield and, mm. and uh, Wolves ended up winning the corner. And then he's gone up to Southampton. 
Yeah. 18 years old, it shows you the personality that he's got. Mm -hmm. But he lifted walls with his with his vibrancy, his positivity, he gets his head up, looks to make things happen, mm -hmm. he's very, very, very confident, skillful of course as well, and um, can pick a pass, you know, for that cost of chance. It's a fantastic through ball. Yeah. Um, and he, he really really galvanised Wolves really and mm -hmm. It shouldn't be up to him to do that, an 18-year-old kid coming off the bench, but it showed for me that maybe Nuno should be showing a bit more faith in him in terms of the minutes that he gives him, mm. because the worry is that when you take Neves or Moutinho out of that central midfield bracket and you put on an attack-minded midfielder that, that you lose, well, the Wolves have nothing to lose at this point, I know they're 3-0 down, but still, it shows to me you put more of an attacking presence in that midfield duo and, and it gives, gives you a different option because Wolves have become a bit predictable with their 3-4-3, three, three. they all stand in their certain positions. Yeah. And, and, and like I said, a bit predictable and easy to read. Keeps what offers you something different, he breaks between the lines, uh, he's got this unpredictable nature about him, skillful, positive, and all that came together tonight, and he was very, very good. So uh, I look forward to seeing more of him soon. Yeah, I think it's we will do. And now, Tim, it doesn't get much easier for Wolves. Uh, Premier League can be a tough league, and we all know that. Arsenal away next. Uh, that will that'll be, be a tough one, won't it? It'll be tough. It'll be a good game. Yeah. Um, I'm calling it now, it's not going to be nil-nil. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll take it back. It's not going to be boring. Yeah. Um, Arsenal will give Wolves space. They'll give Wolves time on the ball. And, and they'll be open and they'll leave pockets of space for Wolves to try and exploit. So I know that they're on a fantastic run, unbeaten run certainly. I think they've won 11 in a row and now they've drawn the last two. But hey, intimidating place to go. But Wolves won't be intimidating. They've taken the three teams that they've played, three big teams they've played this season. They took a point off Man City, they, they, they took the game to them and got a deserved point against Man City. They did exactly the same at Man United. And then Spurs, now the third big team they've played, could easily have got a point tonight. Yeah. On another day, they could have won it. It's no, no exaggeration to say that. So, they're performing well against the big teams. Why not go to Arsenal, go to the Emirates? Nothing, to, really nothing to lose in that one. Um, give it a go and see what you can get. Like I said, Ars Arsenal, pretty susceptible to conceding goals. So, let's uh, let's see what they can do. But three consecutive defeats, and I know they're, they're slipping down the table now to 11. But for me, I'm looking at it more positively than that. Mm -hmm. Um, Wolves have played really well in the last two games and they've been very unlucky not to get a point from either of those two. Yeah, you'd think if they put in a performance like they did tonight against Arsenal, they'd probably get something out of the game, wouldn't they? Essentially, they, they, need, they need a bit of the, uh, of the green to go, to go with them and they need to sharpen up defensively. They were very suspect tonight for both for the first two goals. You can't just can't give players of Lamella and Lucas Moore's quality that much space. Yeah. You know, Lamella all on his own, in between Bolly and um, Johnny. For the first goal and can clinical finish. And then the second one, Lucas Moore, the seven players in the box, and he's got free header in between Bennett and Doherty. Johnny didn't uh, close down, uh, Trippier to drop the cross in. So you cannot give Arsenal that kind of room in and around the box. You just can't. So they've got to sharpen up defensively. If they can do that, let's not put them in at the other end. We know Wolves have got a hell of a team. So let, let's uh, let's see what they can do. Let's see, Tim. So disappointing result here, but a promising performance from Nuno's. And for all the latest. Uh, match reaction, make sure you stay with us at expressingstar.com.